Hello, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Biblical Financial Freedom. Hey, if you're here for the first time, I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministry here in the great Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. I don't know where you're watching me from, what country, what state, but I wish you would just text, email, or not text, but email us and let us know where you're watching us from. We would appreciate it. And so we can pray for you and, uh, and whatever prayer request you have, send them in so we can pray over and believe God to meet all your needs also. Amen. Well, look, when you come in with us, the number one thing we want you to do, come on in, sit down, relax, make sure you always have your great textbook, the Bible. This is our main textbook. Everything we give you, we're going to support it with what the word of God says. Amen. And then we ask you to have a pen and some paper, something to take notes so you can go back, look over these things and uh, read them and meditate on them. Amen. OK, so I'm going to pray. Then we're going to make a daily confession and we're going to pick up again on our and our lesson. We've been teaching on divine prosperity. Man, this is good. So I want you to come in, keep taking notes, keep hearing so you can grow and it can become a part of your life. Amen. So Father, right now in Jesus name, first of all, we want to thank you for this day. And I want to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share the wonderful gospel, of the Lord Jesus Christ with your people. I thank you, Father, for giving us ears to hear. And I thank you, Father, we're not just hearers of the word of God, but we're doers of the word of God. And then I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank you. He's the greater one. He lives in me. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the teacher. And I ask you to help me today as I teach this word and as I present the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to your people. Help me to say what you need me to say. Help me to emphasize the things you want me to emphasize so I can meet the people of God's needs this day in Jesus' name. And then, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now, in Jesus' name, we bind every outer word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver the devil would try to bring against us to hinder us from hearing and receiving the word of God in our lives this day. And then, Father, I thank you. You gave us the kingdoms of the kingdom. That whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loose on heaven, on earth. So, Father, right now, I just release and I loose the peace of God. I release the joy of God, the healing of God, the revelation knowledge of God, the freedom of God, the favor of God that surrounds us like a shield. I release it on your people this day. And, Father, we give you all the praise, the glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen and amen. Okay, glory be to God. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, get your Bibles. Come on, get your Bibles. Wave them in the air. Come on, get them up in the air. Come on, let the whole world, let the devil especially know that we really care. Amen. Are you guys ready? Here we go. This is our, let's make this confession. It's on the screen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus name. Well, come on, somebody shout. Amen. All right. Hey, let's go to our foundation scripture real quick. I know I didn't have not mentioned this so far, but this is the foundation scripture on this teaching on divine uh, prosperity. And that's found in third John verse two. And I'm going to read it from the King James. Uh, do I have it in the new King James? Okay, let's look at this in the New King James then. Hallelujah. I don't want to mess it up on the screen. Let's look at this in the New King James, 3rd John. Let me look it up here in my nice eye pad here. 3rd John in verse 2. You ready? In the New King James, it says this. Beloved, beloved, 
I pray that you may prosper in all things. See, this is God using John to write to the church, to his people. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Amen. Now, I'm going to read it in the King James. Okay. In the King James, it says this. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, the last time we was with you last week, uh, I, I, I left off. I was talking about where Jesus, he was sitting down and the disciples and he was talking to them about a hundredfold, you know, of receiving a hundredfold return. But this is what I want. I'm not going to read that. Come on. I'm going to uh, just uh, go back and discuss some key points I gave to you last time. I want to bring them up again. One of the things I, I sense in my spirit to share with you, to remind you of is that the, that, uh, the true secret. Now watch this. The true secret to divine prosperity is giving first. Okay. I heard me again. The true secret to divine prosperity is giving first. First, now, the, and now watch this. First, you give of yourself and then your possessions. See, a lot of people want to receive the blessings of God, but they don't want to give themselves. Okay, you see, you have to give yourself and then your possessions. The law of God is give. That's just the way God, everything God does is give. Everything he created and stuff, he gave for you and I. That was love given for us to enjoy. Giving is the essential of living or the essence of living. Giving is the essence of living. If you want to live, be a giver. If you want to enjoy life, be a giver. Why do you say that? Because we, we created in the image of God. We, we like our father. He was a giver. We are givers. Life is centered around how much of ourselves we can give, not how much we can get. Life is centered around how much we can give, not how much we can get. Okay? Now, I, I want to go and pick up where we left off. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 4. Excuse me. Excuse me. I believe I'm healed by Jesus Christ. I'm a healed man. Glory be to God. So let's go to Ephesians because I want to read all of these scriptures, these, these last through, uh, few scriptures in this part of divine prosperity in the New King James. So I want to look up Ephesians. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. I'm going the wrong way on this thing. Okay, look at Ephesians 4, and let's look at verse 28. Is that the one I want? Yes. Okay, now look at what it says. Look, church, if there's anything I can get you to understand, this is what I want you to understand. Stick with the word of God. I don't care. Look, I'm doing, we starting a teaching. We started recording to do a teaching on ears to hear about ears to hear that's on walking by faith on on the on the same broadcast on Sundays uh Sunday evening and we're talking about ears to hear church let me if I can say anything for you to hear today stick with the word of God when you hear people teaching or preaching or saying things if it's not in line with the word of God then you know Maybe you need to make a move or you need to get up out of there. Living for God is not as complicated as people make it as if we stick with the instructions of his word. Now listen to Ephesians 4.28. It says, let him who stole steal no longer. Now that's not hard, right? If you used to steal, God said don't steal no more. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him 
who has need. What's the purpose of us working? So we have something to give. Come on, it's not complicated. Don't go out there still. Go and work. If you got to create your own business or do something, I don't care what it is. If you're just good at baking, I mean, making pancakes, get, get pancakes and give away or something. If you, you're good at making homemade bread, make bread and give a, a bread away. Man, we have a client, my wife and I, we do real estate also, and we have a client who made us some homemade bread. Let me tell you. Woo! Glory. I, I can't eat that stuff like I used to, but boy, I, you know I wasn't pushing away from that. I ate a piece of that and I thought, wow, homemade. Yeah, holly. People still do that today, but it was good. <laughs> Hallelujah. But did you see the instructions there? If you steal, don't steal no more. Work with your hands so you have something to give. Now, working with your hand, you might have started garden that you can grow some vegetables and all of that, some tomatoes, some cabbage or something. And what you going to give to somebody, your neighbors or somebody giving need. Man, God finds all kinds of ways. He just, you give yourself away, you listen to God, and you just give what he tells you to give. Be a blessing. The people of God, we were created to be a blessing. And so I can hear some of you now, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Some, but that's so small. You take what you have. Jesus said, look, the word of God says, if you're faithful over little, God will begin to make you rule over much. But in our society and most people we know today, they want the much without starting off with the little. That is not the concept of God. You must start with little so he can increase you with much. That's just the way it is. Seed time and harvest. A seed doesn't grow at full strength all overnight. It, it produces little by little. And then it, it, it eventually becomes a big tree. I mean, really, really. But it's the smallest seed. So just use what you have and just obey the word of God. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Okay, I'm doing this in the New King James. 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 8. And look at verses uh, 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Look at verses 3 through 5. It says this. For I bear witness that according to their ability, listen to this, for I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Now, this is talking about the people who came. They were willing to give and to help God, employing us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord. You heard what they did? They first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urge Titus that as he had begun, so, right? Okay, I, I, I want to stop at, at verse 5. I want to stop at verse 5. I want you to see that. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. What did they do first? They gave themselves. They gave themselves. When our entire existence is given of ourselves, then we begin to walk in divine prosperity but you must do that first step first when Jesus came to the earth what did he do he gave himself first he must have been up there in heaven and the father said and before time Jesus will you go I go father I go and he knew in the father oh, Jesus I don't have any backup plan But he gave himself. He left all of glory, came down on the earth, died for you and I for our sins, went to hell so we didn't have to go to hell. What was he doing? He was giving. He was giving. He gave himself first. And in return, look at all the harvest he's receiving, you and me and others. But he gave of himself first. That's a principle of God. How much of yourself you measure out, listen to this, how much of yourself you measure out or you give out of yourself 
determines how much you receive. But, oh, okay. I, I, let me read this scripture. Okay, I'm going to tie this in. Look, last scripture I have you for this lesson. Look at Luke 6. I know you. some of you know these, but we're going to go over them again. Look at Luke 6. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I came to Bible study today by biblical financial freedom. I needed this. Look at Luke 6 and verse 38 in the New King James. Thank you, Jesus. Look what it says here. Give. Just stop. You just think of, you can underline that. Some of you, this will set you free right here. It says give and it will be given to you. What did he say? You give and it will be. Not it might be. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, this is the part I wanted to get to. How much of yourself you measure. See, you determine the measure. You de if you just give a teaspoon of yourself, you only receive a teaspoon back. If you give a little half a cup, you get a half a cup. If you give the whole thing, you receive it all back. See, because look, he said, for with the same measure that you use, determine how you measure how much you want to give of yourself, it will be measured or given back to you. See, who determined the measure? Who determined the return? You do. Why? Depends on how you measured it out to give. Okay, I want you to think about that. You are the determined factor on how much you give in determining how much you give back. That's why I love, I love the thing about the, uh, the, the, the story, the parable when Jesus was looking over the treasury and everybody was thrown and giving up theirs abundance. But this one widow came and she just gave a couple mites. And what did that, what was the difference? She gave it all. She gave everything. Them other people gave out of theirs abundance. See, it's not the amount, church. A lot of times people think, well, I only have a dollar to send, or I only can send in $5. It's not the amount. It's the obedience of God. Somebody can send in to us $1,000. You might only send in a dollar, but it could be all you have got. And God looks at that. Oh, I'm, I'm going to bless them. I'm going to bless them real good. They gave all. I'm going to give all. But what many people do, they look at the amount. That's what God had to teach me. He had to train me. He had to break me. Don't look at the amount. Just obey what I tell you to give. Just obey what I tell you to give, how to give, and who to give. And once I learned that, see, that's the secret I live with today. It's nothing new. I don't have to look for nothing new. I just, God, I get paid, or God blesses me and my wife. Lord, I re we received this commission check, or we received this, somebody blessed. What do you want me to do with it? Sometimes the Lord, I know one time the Lord, we went to uh, uh, Southwest Believers Convention with uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministry. And one time somebody blessed me and my wife with some money to go down and enjoy it. And, the, and the, my wife said, oh, glory. She was happy. And she said, the Lord spoke to her and said, give it, I want you to sow it all into the ministry that give it away. Now, I didn't rejoice and say, oh, glory be to God. You know what I said? Oh, glory be to God. He didn't tell me to do that. He told you to do that. <laughs> he told her to take her part and give it. But I'm being honest. But you know what I ended up doing? Whatever she needed. Hey, baby, whatever you need, you, you can have. But there's been times when God has blessed me and he told me, just give it all away. One time we came to a church service. We were getting ready to go on vacation. We took some money out to have, we like to have some cash with us sometime in case we stop and get breakfast or something. And as we go on, uh, uh, another pastor friend was preaching and the Lord spoke to us and, and me and my wife. And, and he said, give up all that money you have in your wallet. And we said, okay. My wife said, yep. I, she said, I believe that's what the Lord said. I was waiting to make sure we're in the group. And we just have cash money, just hand, hand in the bundle of cash and say, God bless you. Now, I'm not saying that to brag, to get no applause. I'm just telling you, you obey. It wasn't that I always could do that. 
I remember sitting in church sometimes, people, good ministry, and it's like, oh, Lord, I wish, I just want to be able to give to them. I didn't have nothing to give. Maybe I only had a dollar, two dollars. The Lord said, just give it, give that to them. I, I was so thrilled when the day came when I could give a hundred dollars, extra hundred dollars away. All I'm saying is, if you stick with it, you be faithful. God sees, God sees, God knows. You just be faithful, but be faithful in what? First of all, you be faithful in where God tells you to give it, okay, and who to give it to. Well, let, me, let me share this. Let me say these three points, and then I'll share this with you. When blessings, when blessings come, then your measuring out must increase. All right, you didn't hear that. When blessings come, now your measuring out must increase. Why? Because if you don't, it'll stay staggered. It, 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 it'll stay stagnated. It won't increase. Because see, the blessings come, now your measuring out must increase. Why? Because you always want to be in that position of where your dependency is on God. Always think in terms of giving more. Okay, Lord, I remember I only had $10 to give. Now I can give 100 Now I'm looking to give 1000 Now I'm looking to give 10000 Now I'm looking. See, you just keep aiming for more to give. Why? The more you give, the more God can trust you, and it just keeps flowing like that. And remember, you can never outgive God. That's where I want to stop with you today. Because next week we're going to start uh, Divine Prosperity, then part two. But I want to stop here. But let me share this with you. I believe the Spirit of the Lord just wants me to share some things with you and uh, 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 bless you with. I remember when God first started teaching me these principles about giving and trusting Him. There was times when God would say to me, I want you to give this amount to this ministry. Now, if I didn't, Lord our God, I don't have that. I mean, I didn't have it. But that wasn't God wanted. He wanted me to start sowing that seed. Watch this. As I begin to sow that seed, see, I was looking like I was the source. But God was the source. See, God might lay on your heart, I want you to give into that ministry, I want you to give $100. You might say, I don't have a hundred dollars, but if you only have a dollar, you start sowing. Now, as soon as you give that dollar, God sees you gave that hundred, and he's going to bring the resources for you to give the hundred. Now, this is the key. This is what I want some of you to see. The key is don't eat the seed when God gives it to you. Say, so what you mean by eat the seed? Don't take what God has given you to sow into that ministry or wherever he's telling you to give it to or who he's telling you to give it to. Don't take it and use it for something else. That is stealing. See, that's where he said, he that steal, he that stole, don't let him steal no more. So when God taught me, he thought, hey, I want you to sow this amount into this ministry. And at first I'm thinking, Lord, I don't have, and Lord said, no, 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 you're looking at it wrong. I just need you to get in agreement and say, okay, yes, Lord. And I'll provide it for you, but I want you to have the, see, I want you to be willing and obedient to do what I said. See, that's calling those things that be not as though they were. It was already there, but I just couldn't see it. So I got to say, okay, by faith, Lord, I'm going to do this. So I might have an extra $5. I'm sending it to that ministry. All of a sudden, I get an extra $10, sending it to that ministry. All of a sudden, I get an extra $100, sending it to that ministry. $1,000, sending it to that ministry. What happened? All of a sudden, I'm doing what God told me to do. Maybe a couple months, a year, a couple years later, the Lord said, now check, calculate how much you gave to that ministry. Whoa, I did it. I did it. Why? It keeps you committed and it keeps you trusting God. But a lot of times God tells people and they say, okay, I have people come up to me and say, hey, the Lord told me to sow this much into your ministry. And they never done it. At least not up to this and that time. And I, I just saw anytime people tell me that, I just say, okay, 
Okay. Now, check this out. You think that's hurting them or hurting me? It's not hurting me. It's just that they missed an opportunity to receive back. Why? They measured. God told them something. I believe God spoke to them. He gave them something to do, instructions to do, and they didn't follow it. And because they didn't follow it, hey, I'm praying that they bless, but most of the time they probably struggling and stuff. God had to teach me that. When I tell you something, you follow through with it. Now, there's other things that come and try to take. And I mean, I was sent here, sent there, sometimes not just once a week, two times a week. And, and God began to teach me. That's how easy it is, church. We do not have to complicate this. We don't have to complicate it. The world will tell you to do things a different way. If you want to walk in the divine prosperity of God, you prepare in your heart to be a giver. And there's not a problem, especially a financial problem. There's not a financial problem that God can't solve if you make the decision to follow and obey his leading. I'm here. I'm a, I'm a living witness. I'm totally debt free. Totally debt free. And because of God, it was nothing else. It was because of the teaching and the direction of God. That's not that I'm better than any of you and all of that. I never want you to think that. But I want you to tell you, man, what a wonderful place to be. And you can do it. We did it. You can do it. And people are always looking like, well, you must have made this money and did this. No, it was obeying God. You just obey God. God is not asking for you to do no more than he know you can do. And if you trust him, you put confidence in him, he'll get you out like that. I mean, God will do it, and you'll be so free, and you'll be so happy. All right? Okay. Well, we out of time. I want you to know I love you. Really, I do. I want you to come back. Next week, we'll start a lesson on it. It'll be Divine Prosperity Part 2. Amen? Okay. Look, just pray. Just obey. Ask God what He wants you to do when it comes to our ministry. That's all I'm going to say to you. Okay, now I want you to remember this, each and every one of you. I really mean this with all my heart. Remember that God is exalted. God is exalted. Satan, that no good, low down, sap sucker, he is defeated. And Jesus, glory be to God, I said, and Jesus is Lord. P-O-H, peace out, homies and homies. I see you next week. God bless you. Bye.